Man, this is quite a turnout. There's also a plus one here, too. Got a little extra guy here. So how's everyone doing tonight? You guys ready to see a new game? Well, this wouldn't be a real pinball expo if we didn't bore you to death first. So we're going to do a bit of talking, and then we'll let you see the good stuff. So as Gary said, um, I'm Normal Vasani. I do the sales and marketing for American Pinball. And the past four months that I've been there, it's been an amazing experience because I've never worked for a company that gets to manufacture really, really cool and expensive toys. And that's basically what pinball is. It's all about entertainment, it's all about fun. But before that, we have a couple of very special guests in our audience. I'd like to thank um, our really good friend, Rich Davis, for coming over. And we even have, yeah, yeah. We even have the mayor of Palatine, Jim Schwantz, here, who'd like to say a couple words to everybody. Thank you, Normal. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come and speak. Um, as Normal said, I'm the mayor of Palatine. I've been the mayor of Palatine for the last nine years. Um, before that, I was fortunate to have had a uh, Short NFL career, played seven years um, for the Chicago Bears, the S Dallas Cowboys, and the San Francisco 49ers. Um, so I know what it's like to be entertained, and I know what like entertainment is all about. So um, I'm speaking to you today, though, as the mayor of Palatine, and what it's like to have a company as professional, as strong as Aimtron, and soon to be American Pinball in our town. Palatine is a town of about 65,000 people. We have a small bit of manufacturing, light manufacturing that we, uh, that we have down a, a street called Vermont Street. And years ago, about five, six, seven years ago, Mukesh came and had a vision of what he wanted to see down on Vermont Street. He bought a dilapidated old building that was literally gravel floors in it. And he turned it into a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility that anybody would be envious of. And in the village of Palatine, what it did for us, not only did it turn around our manufacturing district, but it started to spur on big time job growth. And we've seen a tremendous increase in the jobs that have been produced by Mukesh and his vision. And we are fortunate to be able to very soon get to call American Pinball uh, manufactured right in Palatine, right in home in Palatine. So we are excited about that opportunity and we can't wait for that to happen. Um, Mukesh has built himself a very strong American-made business, and uh, it's one thing for mayors to be able to stand up and say we've got a very strong manufacturing, we've got very strong. It's another thing to be able to stand up, we manufacture really cool things like pinball machines. So we're excited about that. We can't wait for the uh, the opportunity to have American Pinball in, in Palatine. And uh, uh, on behalf of uh, myself, the village of Palatine, our staff, um, our residents, you know, I want to thank uh, Mukesh, Nirmal, and uh, all the people over at um, Aimtron and American Pinball. And at this time, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, the, man, the, the, the man we're here to hear, see, the, the, the principal, the CEO and the founder of Aimtron and American Pinball, Mr. Mukesh Vasani. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, um, my dear friends, business friends, pinball community, and our design team who made this miracle. You know, Aimtron design team and American Pinball design team, especially we call J and J Group. You know, we have five Jacks, one, two, three, four, five. You know, Jim, John, Josh, another Josh, and Jeff. 
And we have other lot of staff members, but you know, we have five jacks, that's why we are winning. Again, welcome and thank you for your time and support for another amazing milestone mark for American pinball. We are, we all are excited to see the miracle made by our design team. So I won't take much time. And already, Honorable Mayor already explained a lot of things about AIMTRAN and myself, so I don't have to introduce anymore. But one thing, while walking on the floor, a lot of questions came up. Who is American Pinball? What is the relation with AIMTRAN? Who is AIMTRAN? And that was kind of murmuring, so that's what I would like to take you for a couple seconds for my journey. Born and brought up in a small village of 500, and being an engineer after that, came to land of opportunity in America in 1994 Christmas Eve. And that's where my journey started. Even though construction business owner in India, I came here and changed 180 degree. And I went to DeVry and started electronics business in 1996. First decade, our main clientele base was gaming industries, WMS, Williams, and a lot of other gaming industries. So we have a passionate and passion for gaming and amusement since day one. It was a partnership journey. In 2007, partner retired, and we started AIMTRAN as a newborn company in 19, I'm sorry, 2009. In 2009 to 2018, almost nine year journey, we took this company to about 30 to $40 million. And now thanks to Dawal, he, you know, helped me to raise this company, but now it's time to start our own product line. So double came an idea, let's start pinball. I said, why not? Because, you know, this is something is giving us a, a gaming passions, you know, amusement. So that's where we started, um, you know, in October 19, 2015, we started American Pinball. So exactly three years today, you know, so that's where American Pinball came in picture. In AIMTRAN group, we have five, six company, but nothing is right now, is we are not here to talk about AIMTRAN. I would like to invite and come to visit the facility and you will see a lot of things over there. But again, today, I would like to just give you a glimpse where American Pinball came from. And the last, but not least, <coughs> as Mayor said, we acquire a big building in a Palatine, so our business model will be a couple lines for pinball machine, one or two lines for contract manufacturing only, because that's our forte, and then one line for NPI. So that's a, we will have a big fortune in amusement, not only one pinball industry, but other redemption game and a couple other areas we're gonna diversify. Because AIMTRAN itself is diversification. We have a government contract, we have a, you know, medical areas, we have indus instru industrial, we have a gaming, so we have all around. So that's where in the amusement industry, we're gonna make a long path so we don't get fail or we don't get any other, you know, wind tunnel or something happens in the economy so we can survive. So that's about, you know, AIMTRAN journey and American pinball journey. And I'm gonna like to say thank you to Dawal to take the lead on this. And thanks to Nirmo, he just joined on this journey. And I'm gonna have new millennium, new thought process in pinball industries come in the picture. So again, thank you for time. I don't want to take much time. I would like to again one more time thank you to our design team, Joe, Jim, Josh, Jeff, and another, jo another Joe, Paul, Brian, Barry. There's a Leslie on the back. So there is a lot of, you know, our staff member, they work day and night. So within one year, we got a second strong machine, and I rest assured that uh, there will be a quality. So make sure Quality is number one for all American pinball machine. Again, thank you for your time. And we are here to support. Last, we are, we are in my SRS, the last long you know, commitment to support pinball community. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Thank you for that very insightful history on kind of how American Pinball came from Aimtron's desire to really support 
the gaming amusement community that's really been supporting us for the past couple of decades. One thing that people always ask is, if there's not much money in it, why did you choose pinball? And the main reason for it is, as Jim referred to, it creates a lot of jobs. It's a great employment opportunity, and it's a great way to manufacture fun. There's no, I'm not going to say that, there's very few companies out there that can say that they manufacture fun as a product. American Pinball's journey has been fairly short to date, but when we first started, it was strictly as a contract manufacturer back in 2015. Never in our wildest dreams were we going to create our own product like Houdini. And that all changed when we met Joe Balser. And it is my firm belief that the Vasani family meeting Joe was nothing short of destiny. So thank you for that. Now, with that, I really don't want to take much more of your time. I'm going to hand it off to Josh Kugler and Joe Schober, who's kind of sneak slash ninja hiding over in the corner over there. And they will explain a bit about the game, what it's about, a bit about the rule set and stuff like that. So the software team, everyone. OK, let's rock and roll. Uh, Joe Schober, I'm dragging him up here because he was my uh, collaborator in the, the rules and the code on this game. But I first want to talk about our design team hiding in the back. Uh, there was a debate about who should present. They, I guess we drew straws. I got the short straw, or at least that's what they told me. I wasn't there that day. Um, so I'm going to be up here. They're all hiding in the back. But I do want to first recognize uh, Jeff Bush, our artist. Jeff, you want to just wave over? Huh? Uh, Ish Radisi, our animator. Matt Kern, our sound guy, who did some amazing new compositions for Oktoberfest. And of course, in case when I say it, the legendary Joe Balser. <laughs> when uh, we were working on, we were still working on Houdini when we started thinking about what our next game should be. And Joe said it was always in his desire to do Oktoberfest. And I looked at Joe and I said, what the, Oktoberfest? And that's probably the same reaction many of you had when you first heard it, because I thought, okay, Oktoberfest, that's about beer and beautiful women and beer and beautiful women. And uh, so I did a little research on it and found out, no, that's not what Oktoberfest is. Oktoberfest is a, a huge festival. It's a huge celebration. It's about food and family and music and beer and rides and games. And I got really excited about it uh, once I knew more about it. Because a lot of people who ask me about themes we could do, and what I get all the time is people say, you guys should do the Three Stooges. And I say, it's never going to happen. And they're like, oh, it's a great theme. It fits the pinball market. I said, I'm not a Stooges fan, and there's no way I'm spending a year of my life with Larry, Moe, and Curly. Uh, <laughs> so it was important with Oktoberfest, like it was with Houdini, uh, that it was something that, that I could enjoy and that we could get behind. Um, uh, this is Joe Schober, for people who don't know. Uh, Joe joined Whoa. us. <laughs> huh? Huh? Uh, Joe joined us back in the spring. He was working for Highway Pinball. He did the rules and code on Alien. And when Highway had its unfortunate demise, uh, I waited a whole 24 hours before I called Joe uh, about that. I was not the first to call him, as it turns out. Uh, however, I was the most persuasive. Uh, either that or he was just so lacking sleep when we talked, he wasn't thinking clearly, and convinced him to come on board and, and work on Oktoberfest. Uh, with us, and it's been great having him uh, on the team. It's all really great for me to have a collaborator to work with, to debate things, you know, throw ideas against, and I think what we're bringing in Oktoberfest really shows that uh, collaboration we've had together. Joe's a tournament guy. He's a serious pinball guy. I'm more of an enthusiast guy, and it's really allowed us to look at the game from all of those constituents, whether it's the novice, the enthusiast, or the tournament player, 
to make sure that there are things in this game for everyone. That for the people who really love strategy, who really want to you know, focus on multipliers and power-ups and accelerators, that stuff is there. For people who just want to try and get through modes and experience the game, that stuff is there. I'm going to go through a couple of real slides, a few slides. We're going to try and go through this quick. Joe's going to add some color commentary as I go. Uh, and then we're going to you know, show you the game and give you a chance to play it. I know Jack's going to be streaming the game live for it. So all the people at home who can't be in the room, and maybe we'll be able to get it up on this screen. I don't know. We'll try that. But he, he's hard at work here trying to get that set up. So, um, so we're gonna, you're going to get to see a few sneak, picture, sneak peeks and some photos in here as we go through, um, but not too much. So let's see if this will work here. All right. Cool. Ooh, I found too low though. There we go. Ooh. All right, pinball on tap. As I said, it's not just about food, or about beer rather. It's food, music, rides, game. Quick shot of the game. As you can see, it's a, a very different look than Houdini. Uh, Jeff, it was amazing to me that he could shift gears and create something. These pictures don't do justice. You're going to see in a few minutes how bright and colorful and alive the game is. As you see, it's crazy with wire forms. One of the things Joe really wanted to do in capturing the, the ride side of the game was to really do that. Uh, so we're going to move through this quickly. Um, Oktoberfest, uh, at least in Munich, there are 14 main tents. I got that right? Right, 14 main tents. Actually, if you experience the Oktoberfest in Munich, the original Oktoberfest from 1850-whatever, uh, there's 14 major tents there. And we figured, hey, well, that's the highlight of Oktoberfest, so we got to make that the, the highlight of our game. Um, there are, so the four, those are the primary modes in the game. Uh, there's a couple of multi-balls in there. There is a video mode in there. Uh, Joe has told me he absolutely refuses to work on the video mode. He is anti-video mode. It was very early on <laughs> in our conversations. I said, you know, I'm going to want to do a video mode. He said, no. He goes, I will not be involved. He says, you can do the video mode. I said, fine. Uh, it's not in the game yet. You'll have to wait for that. So, because he won't help me, so I have to do it myself. Um, there are two primary multi balls. So there are some multi balls in the tent modes. There are two primary ones, which is beer barrel multi ball and corkscrew multi ball. And we're going to hit on some of those rules in a minute. Uh, for that already, uh, just having those two multi balls as kind of the key multi balls of the game, kind of gives a glimpse already of the philosophy we had around the entire game, which was it's not just beer. Beer is kind of the most well known part of Oktoberfest, is what a lot of people think of, but it's a huge carnival. It's like a portable amusement park, and so uh, the corkscrew is kind of internally before he settled on the name corkscrew, we were calling it the roller coaster multi ball. So. Besides beer, one of the major features of the game is this big roller coaster. Um, we have something in the game called Stein Boosters. Early on, I had the thought of that you'd be purchasing beers and they would give you capabilities and powers. And Joe jumped on that idea and it expanded a little bit. Uh, and so it's a key part of the game is there's a bartender in the game. And when you bash him, the bar opens up and you're able to purchase a Stein of beer that gives you different powers and capabilities that help you. So it really introduces a layer of strategy around how you want to approach the game. And uh, well, Joe and I will be happy when you're playing the game to give you some insights around that. If you want heavy duty strategy, talk to Joe. If you want basic strategy, talk to me. Uh, food is a huge part of Oktoberfest. So there's a, a series of modes tied to the food stand. These are Uber scoring modes. I think we'll hit on that in a minute. Uh, we have something called MagNab, player controlled magnets and ducks, 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 and we're going to talk more about that in a moment as well. Um, so the tent modes, there's a scoop. We've all seen those before. Spell tent at the lower lanes, shoot the scoop. All the modes have a way to win. The timer continues to go, and you have basically the concept of like victory laps. Uh, we were able to continue to score points, right? Anything there I missed? No, nope, exactly right. Uh, we, for the tournament players out there, uh, I think we'll talk about this here maybe in the next slide, but I'll jump ahead possibly. So uh, just as with the Oktoberfest in Munich, those 14 tents are all sponsored by uh, like major breweries and stuff like that. And we're like, well, how that's a big part of it. How can we bring that into the game? And so what we settled up on was that every tent, every mode is sponsored by, associated with a stein. 
Uh, so as you collect those steins, it multiplies the value of its associated temp feature, and you can stack those. And the steins do other things, which I'm sure we'll be talking about here in a second. I will tell you right now, the best stein by far is the Slosh Rosh Lager. Frosty okay. Ferret. Uh, no, Slosh Rosh Lager. Frosty really, Ferret. I highly recommend it. Very good. Um, modes can be done more than once if you haven't won it. It continues where you've left off. Um, so you have that chance to get all the way through it. Um, corkscrew multiball. Um, I'm not sure how long it took Joe to come up with this ramp. Uh, and I watched awesome. him go through a few iterations of it. When I saw the first sketch of it, I basically said to Joe, that's never going to work. And he's like, oh, it'll work. And um, it, it's pretty wild to watch. And the first time they hooked it up, and uh, after we get through the presentation with the other people, I'm just going to throw a slideshow up that shows some stuff behind the scenes along the way. And the first time he hooked it up, it was pretty pretty crazy to, to see that I in action. What's a shame is this video doesn't show when all three balls are spiraling around that ramp. It looks really cool. Um, so uh, you spell, your, you'll see on the game, the game has, I think it's 27 stand-up targets, so lots to shoot at. There's a bank that spells October, another bank that spells fest. Completing either bank will lower a ramp to shoot up into the roller coaster staging area, complete the other bank, it locks, it lights the other two locks, lock your balls, and off you go. Uh, beer barrel multiball, why don't you uh, take this one? Sure, so uh, there's actually two distinct lock mechanisms and two completely different uh, multiballs in the game. Uh, the beer barrel multiballs triggered by there's five uh, stand-ups front and center, so they're pretty uh, newbie friendly, casual player friendly, you don't have to have any crazy angle shots to make the prost targets, and that qualifies uh, sh locks on the beer barrel, which is a gigantic beer barrel, as you can see there in the thing. It's pretty cool, once you lock three balls up there, uh, they come pouring out of the tap. Um, one fun part about the beer barrel multi-ball is you can, in multiplayer games, you can steal someone else's beer, you can steal their ball locks, uh, which gives a little extra bit of fun and strategy to the game. Um, and the, uh, I know, it's the, the, the beer barrel shot is just really fun. It's kind of a upper flipper, steep, tight uh, ramp shot. It's fun to make, really satisfying when you whack it around there. Um, As but you can see from the picture, it kind of goes up and around our Otto, who's our bartender, who takes care of all your needs. The shot goes up and around and into the barrel, and it, it's kind of fun when you, when you make it. All right. Uh, we talked a little bit about the food stand. So at the back of the game, there's a drop target protecting a buck. Uh, the spinner and drop target eventually get the food stand open. Uh, some Uber modes around ramps and uh, pop bumpers with some nice food stuff going on. Ultimately, those give you calories, which help you with beer barrel multiball, right? Uh, with both multiballs, in both fact. Multiballs, both multiballs okay. are boosted by calories. A and one of the fun things about this is the spinner was actually something I asked uh, Joe Balser to put in because you got to have a spinner in a game. It's an awesome element. And uh, just in general, the way the rules are set up in the game, every shot is important for something. You know, I always get irritated at, at games where it's like, well, you never really want to shoot the left ramp. You never really want to shoot the right orbit from a, from a strategic point of view, a gameplay point of view. And so I'm pretty sure uh, we can say that every single shot in this game has purpose in the rules. If you're, you're playing competitively and you want to maximize your score, every shot in the game is important. So. Uh, that includes the food stand. It, it forces you to spread the shots around the play field. Otherwise, you can go ahead and start multi-balling. It just ain't going to be worth that much. So uh, as we said, you accumulate calories. And we were talking through the rules one day. And Ish, our animator, said, so if you eat too many calories, do you go into a coma? And I said, that's a great idea. So that's actually the mini wizard mode for the food stand, is if you consume too much calories, you go into a coma. And the game actually will basically shut down uh, until you work off those calories and then the game will resume again. Uh, and actually the flippers get a little weak too because you know, you're know you you're a little weak and then you gotta hit the, hit the spinner a few times to get that strength back up, get rid of a few of those calories and then you're able to, to resume your game. And so if you don't like that, you can blame Ish. If you do <laughs> like it, then we're happy to uh, take credit for that. 
when we looked at the layout, Joe and I, there, there's an upper right flipper in the game. There's a lot of shots off that flipper, so it's it's pretty ki critical. And I we wanted to make different shots, right? Uh, I think there's four distinct shots off the upper flipper, which is pretty fun. Yeah. And so we, you know, we wanted to make sure that you could get to use that flipper a lot and get the ball up there. And and Joe had put a magnet right above it, so he was already kind of anticipating that. And we we thought, boy, it'd be nice to be able to have more control over that. So we said, Joe, can we get an extra flipper button in the cabinet? And at first I thought Joe was going to say, we're not putting that in. And we were already prepared. He had done it previously. And he, he was like, sure, we can do that. He loved the idea. So this extra flipper button lets you control two of the four magnets that are in the game. You can earn what are called mag nabs during gameplay. And when you have those, you control when that flipper fires. There's also times where the game will do it automatically uh, to help you. Uh, there is also an option in operator settings for those of you guys like to have fun at home and you're drinking beer and you always have that problem of how do I drink a beer and play pinball at the same time. In operator settings, you can set the game up for right hand play only and the blue button is your right button and the red button is your left flipper button. Um, and uh, so uh, if we have a chance, probably maybe late on Saturday, if the lines aren't too long, we'll set up one of the games you can play that way. I've played a few times that way. It's actually very intriguing. Um, now, you have to obviously hold a beer as part of the key <laughs> to playing this. You can't hold the table or whatever else it is. Um, it's not as hard as you would think. Right. And we had thoughts of doing a mode based on that, but we actually have some different ideas now for the mode we were going to use this for. So we might use it in a mode, we might not. But it's always there for you late night with your friends. Flip it over, play one-handed. Uh, we talked a little bit about Stein power-ups. Uh, we'll tell you more about that when you're playing the game and you want to learn more about how to boost the game. We want to move through this. Ducks, ducks, and more ducks. So early on, we were thinking about you have to have your mystery award. Every game has to have it. We all expect it to be there. And since there's such a carnival aspect is such a big part, we, we talked about, oh, we should just have the, where you pull the duck out and there's a prize on the bottom. Oh, that's a great idea. And I think Joe started Googling ducks, and it turns out that there's this thing like called Oktoberfest ducks, that people collect these little ducks dressed in Oktoberfest clothing and stuff. So it sort of turned out to be like, hey, that's perfect, it works well. We actually have ducks used in a variety of the, in the game. I will just tell you, collecting ducks is a good thing. It's a good thing if you're an Oktoberfest fan. It's a good thing if you want to score a lot of points. It accelerates points, it helps you with your bonus. So go for the ducks. The bonus is the best part. Get someone to crank the volume when you play. The bonus count of ducks is awesome. Okay, um, that concludes the presentation part. Ooh. I think it's time to show the game. So before I let uh, Joe and Josh unveil the two games, um, Or I guess it's too late for that. Before everyone runs up to play the game, it would be really cool if we could get kind of everyone in the room somehow situated near it so that we can get one huge group picture. What do you guys think? You guys ready to do this? All right, let's try it. Would you like to coordinate? First, just the company. <laughs> 